after seeing countless and countless 80s horror films. You soon start to believe that you have seen all the good stuff out there and there is little to none hidden gems left to discover. So it's a great feeling when you first come across something you haven't seen or heard much about before that is actually very good. That's how I felt after watching the horror anthology Nightmares for the very first time. Except the fact that Scream Factory released it late last year. I knew next to nothing about this movie and was pleasantly surprised to see that this was quite enjoyable. The four segments that make up for Nightmares was originally supposed to be part of a new horror anthology show for NBC, but it never really got its foot off the ground, and instead these segments was put together and released theatrically instead. Nightmares does not have a wraparound story or anything like that, instead it is just presenting the different episodes as chapter 1 to 4, with nothing else between them. They still feel like they belong together though, as they are all done in the same style by the same director. The first story, or chapter if you will, is called Terror in Topanga. The story is about a young woman needing to drive to the store to buy cigarettes, to much protest fired boyfriend as there is a maniac killer on the loose in the neighborhood. Her need for cigarettes though gets the best out of her, and she sneaks out anyway for a night that will be something to remember. There is a great and chilling mood to this segment, as you are sure that something bad is going to happen, but you do not know who or when it is going to strike down. The main character is played by Christina Reigns, who horror fans will recognize from the underrated The Sentinel from 1977. It is a simple setup, and shows that there wasn't talent behind this production, as it is very effective. Even though the story is flawed, and if you give it some thoughts, you will realize that Reigns' character is not exactly making the smartest decisions there. Rain's acting does make up for it though, and the way the segment is handled makes it quite a little treat, although the end twist is kinda lame. The second episode is called The Bishop of Battle, and features Emilio Estevez as the hardcore arcade gamer named JJ. He's absolutely obsessed over an arcade game that has a final level that other gamers believe is only a myth and impossible to get to. JJ believes that this level is real, and that it's possible to beat this game and becomes absolutely obsessed about it, even to the point where it's changing his personality. This is my favorite out of the four stories, and not just because I love games run at era myself. The concept is cool, and Estevez is always fun to watch, regardless of what others may think of his acting skills. I even liked him in Maximum Overdrive, there is just something about the guy that makes him work on the screen for me I guess. That being said though, the character he's playing should perhaps have been a bit younger. His characteristics feel more of that like a 12-13 year old and not like a 21 year old as Estevez was during filming. The segment has some fun 80s special effects, it's great music by legendary punk bands, and a very Tales from the Crypt type of ending. This is a story that could have been in a creep show movie if it had more budget and style behind it. Ok, on to the next. The third one is called The Benediction, and stars the always awesome Lance Henriksen as a priest dealing with a life crisis as he is questioning his faith in God. He sets out for a journey away from his home and church, but something supernatural does not want him to leave. That something is actually a big ass truck that keeps chasing him and nearly killing the poor guy. The segment is perhaps the one that feels the most out of place as it is not your typical horror story. Although for the character in question, the things that are happening are absolutely frightening enough. There is some good stunt work here, but honestly, what makes this work is of course Hendrickson. It's a perfect role for him, and as always he gives everything here and elevates the entire thing by himself. It's not a great story, but it's executed quite nicely. And the final story being told in Nightmares is Night of the Rat. A family of three has moved into a new and lovely house, only to find out that there is another lame creature in it that isn't all that happy about sharing space with the family. This segment is bound to be either loved or hated. It's basically a monster feature with a giant rat tormenting this family, especially the housewife played by the lovely Veronica Cartwright, who has been in plenty of other genre films including some of the best sci-fi horrors ever with both Alien and Invasion of the Body Snatchers. They give the family some focus here and we see the troubled marriage between her character and the husband, played by Richard Masur, another actor who's been in some classic horror, with Stephen King's It and John Carpenter's The Thing. This is a fun segment that reminds me a bit of another rat movie, of unknown origin, although it does fail a bit at the end where we witness the very dated and poor special effects of the giant monster rat. It would have been more funny if the segment itself wasn't handled seriously, and I'm sure that many will hate it once they see the monstrous creature. Personally, I enjoyed the segment regardless of the poor effects, mostly due to the great acting by everyone involved. 
Even the child actor was great in it, and how many times can you actually say that in a horror film? Joseph Sargent directed all episodes, and they do have a TV feel to them, and it plays very safe on the violence part. I do think that his work here is very solid though, even if the style isn't very spectacular or anything like that. He got some great performances out of his actors, and I think he should be happy with his work here. Sargent's career has been continuous since the 50s, and almost all the way up until he passed away in 2014. He only did one other film in the horror genre, and it's not exactly a film anyone remembers with joy, as that film was Jaws 4 The Revenge. Nightmares might not be the most gory, violent or comedy filled anthology out there, but it has four solid stories that were all enjoyable to me. I am surprised that I haven't seen this mentioned more, as it is one of the better anthologies out there. I really enjoyed it, and would recommend especially fans of 80s horror films that didn't necessarily have plenty of blood and guts to give it a go. So Nightmare gets a 3.5 out of 5. Anyone else out there gets some love for Nightmares? What other horror ontologies do you feel are not getting the love that it deserves? Let me know in the comment section below, if you liked this review then I would appreciate the like, and as always, subscribe for more reviews of 80s horror films coming to the channel in the near future.